How you doing? And I'm Ryan from TGM Copiers. I am the lead technician and I'm going to be going over your Konica Minolta copier with you today. And this is my wife, Samantha. I'm also an assistant and technician for TGM Copiers and let's see what Ryan has to say. So anytime you have an issue with your copier, you can't remember how to do something, you're having trouble with something, you're going to call me. I'll be giving you a copy of my business card and if I see you in person, you'll probably get a copy of my business card. Um, so I'm available 24 seven for any needs, but whenever you have trouble with the copier and it actually needs me to come out to look at it and service the copier, that's when you're going to call Samantha or her mother, Laureen here at TGM. The office is open Monday through Friday from 830 to five. You can call us at 860-643-5141 for any of your service call needs, or you can email us your service call needs at office at tgmcopiers.com. And moving forward, I'm going to go over the functionality of the copier with you. And if you have any questions after it, feel free to give me a call. If you ever want to just check what your toner levels are at, you'll see right here in the top right hand corner, you'll see little, little gauges that show you where your toner levels are at. We also may call and ask you for a copier meter level. So what you'll have to do if we call and ask for a meter is you'll hit this menu button. And right here in the top left side, you'll see counter. Press counter. And these are the numbers we're looking for, these three numbers on the side. The meter count, the total, your black, and your color. If we ever ask you to reboot the copier, what we mean is to open the door in the front and use this power switch right here. This power switch here on the screen is a sub power. This puts it into like a power save mode or a sleep mode almost. So this is the main power switch. This is what we're gonna suggest when we're telling you to reboot the copier. It means completely shut it down here, wait 30 seconds and power it back on. There is also this horizontal transport that I forgot to mention before. This, there can also be paper jams in here, but as I said, the copier will give you a, a, um, an animation that you can see here where it's showing you to look inside this unit. When you're using the scan glass, make sure to always place your copy up in the top right corner, face down. The ADF is face up, the glass is face down. So you want it to be in the top left corner. And the copier will automatically size it. It knows what type of paper, especially if you have it set to this auto setting, it's automatically gonna pick the same size paper that you've put on the glass. If you forget that the paper is there after you've run your job, there's going to be a, me a message that pops up on the screen that says, please remove originals. Don't forget to do that. If you ever have a copy that comes out that has a black or a colored line on it, the first thing you want to do is clean this thin strip glass with some Windex and a paper towel. It's the most common thing to happen with copiers is random lines on the copies that are caused by specks of things, dust, toner, whatever that can get on this piece of glass. So if you ever have a line on your copy before you freak out, try cleaning this glass. If you don't have any luck there, then give us a call and we'll, we'll, we'll try to help you further. If you have any paper jams, the copier is going to display where to be looking for those paper jams right here on the screen. It's going to give you a tutorial. Anything with a green tab means it either opens or moves. So if you see there's this green tab here. You can open this up. Nothing in here opens. Um, you can close that. Open up the right side. You'll see there's this turny knob right here. You've got a lever right here that opens this here. This spot right here opens up. So it's very accessible and it will not be very hard to see where the paper is. And as I said, the copier will be very specific into telling you where to look. You may have if you have a paper jam that says it on the screen, but you don't see anything in the side or in here, or in your finisher unit on the left-hand side, like I said, green knob, green knob, open here, twist this, pull this out. Yours may be a little different than this, but it's about the same. Um, if, Like I said, if you have no paper in your finisher unit or in the side unit over here, then you would want to just open and close your paper drawers because there might be paper that just got slightly lift it up just a little bit like that so you want to place it back down
when you're using thicker paper or um, cardstock, you do typically want to run it through your manual feed tray. That is the best tray for thicker or specialty paper because it doesn't have to turn or bend as much going through the copier. So you get more of a straight through copy. It saves wear and tear on the copier. You're going to have less jams. And you're going to have a better quality copy. You're going to pull your hair out of your head a lot less. This here is your waste toner container. If that is full, it's going to be a message. Just as I showed you where the toner is, it's going to say waste toner is getting full. Just give us a call and let us know and we'll come out and we'll swap that out for you. When loading paper into the copier, you're going to want to load your paper in either drawers and always make sure your paper guides are snug up against the sides of the paper. If there's any sort of gap, you're either going to get a mismatch size of the paper or you're going to see uh, your your copy is going to be stepped down on the page a little more. The margins will be too large or the copy will just be off and it won't look correct. So make sure when you load up your paper, you load it up just as you're supposed to. Guides all the way to the sides. And if you're using, um, <clears throat> if you're using a thicker or specialty paper, you're going to need to set that in the copier. So what you do for that is say you have a glossy paper, you would select the tray that you put the gloss paper in and you'll hit this settings and here you can select different types of paper you got thin paper special paper thick one thick one plus thick two thick three letterhead colored paper you also have recycled paper and then these are user settings these are for specialty papers that you know all the specific guidelines to you can enter them right into the copier themselves those those uh, instructions are going to be laid out in the user's manual that I'll also give you a link to. It is an interactive user's manual. If you'd like a hard copy of it, we can do that. Just let us know and we'll get one to you. <laughs> the copier will also let you know when you're low on staples. So when you're low on staples, same thing right here at this bottom line right here. It's going to tell you that the copier is getting low on staples. So give us a call, let us know, and we'll get some staples out to you. All right. So here is the top part of your copier. This is considered your document feeder. So here you're going to want to load your paper in just as I have here going up and down. This is the best functionality for the copier. If you do want to run it like this, this is just fine. This is called letter R and you're going to want your guides always to be snug up to the edges of the paper. If your guides aren't snug, it's going to throw off the copier and it's going to give you an error asking for a different size paper. It's going to either look for the manual feed tray, which is the tray right here on the right side of the copier. It's the fold down tray. That's your manual feed tray or the MP tray. So like I said, up on the top, the document feeder or the ADF, is commonly referred to as. You're going to put your paper in letter. You can load as many documents as you like up to, you see there's an indicator right here. So anywhere up to that indicator is fine. Anything above that, you're pushing the limits of the copier and it's too much. When you do load up your documents here, make sure not to take any extra paper that you might have, which is very common, and place it on the edge of the copier like this. When you do this, if you see a message pops up on the screen that says paper of matching size is not available, it's looking for 11 by 17 at this point. Reason being is the copier automatically senses the size of the paper by the sensors on the ADF. These two flags here are those sensors. So if these flags are covered up and this little eyelet here is covered, it's going to think you have a larger piece of paper in the ADF than you actually have. So always make sure not to cover these flags if it's not necessary. So moving on, once you have your documents loaded up in here, you're going to look at the screen. And as long as this blue light around the start button is blue, you're good. If it's red, it means something is off and it's not able to start the job yet. So from here, if you wanted multiple sets, you would put in your numbers right here where it says number of sets. You can do as many as you like. Here on the screen, you can select whether you want auto color, full color, black, or if you want to change the color of the text, you can do that right here. You also have density settings. So if you want your copy to be darker or lighter, you can move it up and down with these symbols right here. You have your paper trays here. You have paper tray one, paper tray two, 
your manual feed, and you may even have trays three and four depending on your particular copier. Here is your zoom settings. There are, is an automatic zoom, which it will set the exact size that you have of paper in there to correspond. So that's what auto means. One is obviously just regular 100%. And then there's sizes already pre-mapped for you. So if you want an eight and a half by 11 to become uh, an 11 by 17, that's on here, eight and a half by 11 by 11, 17, or an 11 by 17 to be an eight and a half by 11, it would shrink it down there. You can also hit this zoom button and you can put in whatever zoom settings you like. There's some zoom ratios there. And then um, next you're gonna move over to your original output. If this document is single-sided, then you'd leave it on one-sided to one-sided. If it was a two-sided document you would, and you wanted both sides copied, you would use this two-sided to two-sided. If it was a single-sided document that you want to be two-sided, you would select single-sided to two-sided. And if it's a double-sided document that you'd like to be single-sided, you would select two to one. There's also combine here. Combine means you can combine multiple pages onto one sheet. So if you had three or four, you got two sheets into one, four sheets into one, eight sheets into one. So you can do that. Here you have your finishing options. You would select this finishing and you have grouping, which is putting all your first pages together, all your second pages together, all your third pages together, or sort is having page one, two, three, and then it would also come out one, two, three, one, two, three. Offset is just setting each job is gonna be offset from each other just a little bit. Your staple setting is obviously, just as it says, it's a corner staple on the left or two position on the left. Your copier may also have an ability to do three staples. There is sometimes a fold and bind, which this one does have. So you can have a half fold, a center fold, or a tri-fold. And that tri-folded paper will come out down here on the bottom. There is an extra tray that goes there. When you're using the tri-fold, you do need to do tri-fold on 11 by 17. The copier will not tri-fold 8.5 by 11 or 8.5 by 14. So it has to be 11 by 17 paper. So moving forward, toners. They're going to be in this first big door right here. This door opens all the way up. This door will also reset any minor error codes. So if you ever have a screen that pops up, there's a red border and it says a trouble code has been detected. Before you do anything, try opening and closing this door and it may reset that code. A lot of times it's just a temporary mishap with the copier that it can sort itself out. So when your copier is low on toner, it's gonna give you a message right here that says, please order whatever toner color it is. It'll either be C, M, Y, or K, K meaning black. So that means call us and let us know that you're getting low on toner and you need one sent out. If you wait until it says to actually change it, that's when you actually have to change it, but you don't wanna wait that long to order one because then you're gonna run out of toner and the copier's gonna stop working and you're gonna be in stress mode. And we like to try to avoid that by having you order the toner when the copier suggests you do so. So when you see that message pop up, give us a buzz and let us know you're getting low on toner. So you'll open this door, these toners, they turn to the left, you'll hear them click and then they slide right out. The new one will slide right in and clicks to the right. It is normal for there to be a little bit of toner spillage. That's very normal, nothing to worry about. Underneath the toner, you're gonna see there's a waste toner container. This waste toner container is gonna be pretty much managed by us. In rare chances that we'll have you change it, but 